Uh, greetings everyone, here we're here and welcome to my latest D2 project that I have on share. Today we'll be crafting a build around none other than the Raiju Harness, as I believe this one exotic can be used in endgame environments and not just PvP alone. It's common for us to see the following exotic in its glory in Mayhem PvP, as its Whirlwind Guard ability is extremely powerful against everyone you face. But when it comes to PvE, I rarely see a word or peep about the exotic and how its application can benefit the user widely. So I have a version I'd like to show where you can use this in Grandmaster environments effectively and show you how you can use it like a Persuado support build. It's uber strong and flexible in the field, so let's go on with showing how you can have fun with this. But before we march in, if this sounds like just your type of build then why not leave a like, a sub, a share and turn your notifications for more content like this in the future as I would really appreciate it. Now Raiju's Harness is a basic exotic that doesn't require a lot to make it work. It extends your whirlwind guard duration by an extra 10 seconds and also allows you to stop it whenever you like and save energy. It's an emerging exotic that allows you to safely use it when you're in deep and can't fight your way back out. So because of the design, it makes sense that in PvP it can thrive the most there since you can pop it, block, get a kill and then save your energy for later. PvE however is where I can see its use as being fairly good but only in environments where you can die very easily such as Grand Masters, Master Campaign Missions or even Master Raids. If I wanted to make the build function well, I would need to consider this type of content it will be involved in and what type of weapons plus mod should be attached. So here's what I came up with. Flow state where defeating a draw of targets makes me amplified. While Amplified, our dodge ability charges faster, reload speed is greatly increased, and you become more resilient while dodging. We then have Tempest Strike where slide on the ground and then using your melee will produce an arc wave that will jolt. For a fragment, you then want Spark of Ions where defeating a jolted target grants you ion traces. Spark of Ambitu where rapidly defeating targets while amped allows you to produce an orb of power. Spark of Shock where your arc grenades jolt targets. And Spark of Magnitude where storm grenade duration gets increased. For key stats, we have 16 Resilience, 18 Discipline, and 14 Intellect. For key mods, we have Bound for Wealth for plus 2 mods created, Font of Wisdom for a plus 15 Intellect, Elemental Charge, where you become charged with light via clearing elemental wells, Kindling Flame, where being charged with light and providing a team member provides a burst of healing, and Seeking Wells, where elemental wells will track to you. Within the first section, I've provided the blueprint of the build as to how we should go about adjusting the setup and meet our needs. Our exotic will focus on our super and do its job as designed, while our fragments and aspects will focus on grenade usage and jolting multiple targets at once. This in action will benefit our elemental well and charge light mods so we always have a source of energy and power freely available. And then our stats are the key stats to focus on when operating the rest of the armour. When put together, you get a well-supported hunter build that focuses on the core strength of Raijus and allows you to stay relevant for long. For weapons, you should focus on having one weapon that gets your abilities back quickly, but also how it can synergize with the setup in mind. For example, when playing harder content, I know I need to deal with unstoppables, so I would go ahead and pack on the bad juju for my primary. The following weapon is great if you ever focus on a super centric build and want to build up super energy much faster than normal means. It comes with a bunch of other things such as increased stacking damage, full auto and auto reloading your weapon upon each kill which makes it very strong as a kinetic only primary. As our build uses our super a lot, I would also recommend you have this available on spare with a kinetic slifle mod so you can build up super energy even when you don't have other means to do so at the time. For secondary, we have Tarnished Metal with Demolitionist and Vault Shot, which has got to be the best arc special weapon in game currently. It fits the criteria in terms of what the build needs, which is the ability to create grenade energy and the ability to jolt targets and make us amp in the process. Although having something more close range would make more sense since our super is designed around that, having this on hand is a lot more better as we can utilize our grenades at a safe distance, and also we don't need to use our super until the moment comes aka a team member falls or is in trouble. We also have to remember that I intend to use the build in Grandmaster primarily as that's where I will be able to see the build in full action, thus having a mid to long range weapon like this with Vault Shot is perfect. For heavy or a planet stride heavy machine gun with Mugan and Harmony, and although Thunderlord is a better option to have if you're not using an exotic weapon, 
the following is also good to use. As it's a 900 RPM weapon, it can do a lot of damage in a short time frame when properly focused on. With Mulligan Park, I can get ammo back that I may potentially miss, which is suitable for heavy machine guns such as this. Harmony is also good as it's something we can use whenever we net a kill with our other weapons, so you'll get a 20% damage increasement and 15 handling for 7 seconds. It may not look like a great arc weapon to have for most users, and of course there are others to use, but the following is a ammo hog that can really make an impact if you know how to handle it. For stats, as we're close range and pretty much throwing ourselves into combatants, we should have both a high resilience stat and discipline stat like we would usually do in end game. At the same time, a high intellect stat at 40 to 50 would also be appropriate. Resilience at 60 to 100 would be ideal so that you can make full use of the damage reduction and thus survive even longer when in and out of your super. Keep it within these frames as not everyone will be able to reach 100 resilience on the fly, but at the same time you don't want to go below 60 as the damage reduction will become noticeable. If you want to feel more safer, then you could add on the Spark of Resistance mod for a 25% damage reduction when surrounded, on top of the current resistance level you have. Discipline being at 80 allows us to use our Storm Grenades or any grenades of our choice more often and produce wells and super energy on supply. It will also jolt others and make our lives a whole lot easier with taking out multiple groups at once. Now like mentioned before, our Tarnished Metal with Vault Shot and Demo will ease our grenade use and allow us to play safely when we can't rely on other weapons to do so. At the same time, I've also added on the Lightning Strike Twice mod so that we can get even faster grenade regen and the Absolution mod for spreadability energy shared. Doing all this will be enough for you to spend your grenades as you please and at the same time allow you to reduce your grenade stat down by an extra 20 since what you got is enough to cover the missing link. Intellect should then be left at 40 to 50 if you have the Thunder Wizard mod attached. If not, then increase this to at least 70 80 and rely on the Ashes to Ashes mod and Bad Juju for the rest, but only if you don't have the following key mod. Left over wise, we have Homelike Cyber mod for allowing us to create orbs of power via elemental weapons, Ashes to Ashes for getting super energy via grenade kills, Heavy Machine Gun Scavenger mod for increased reserves, and Amped up where you stay amplified for longer. Now with the main bases covered, let's take a look at the mods we're using and how they play within the build. For Head we have Resilience, Homelux Siphon, Ashes to Ashes and Balfour are mod. Arm we have Discipline and Thunder Wisdom mod. Chest we have Discipline, Thermal Shot Plating, Cocos of Dampner and Elemental Charge mod. Leg we have Resilience, Heavy Machine Gun Scavenger, Absolution and Kindling Flame mod. Cloak we have Lightning Strikes twice, Amped Up and Seeking Wells mod. Although we look at Raiju's Harness as a PvP focused exotic, its application in use in PvE is viable thanks to the Arc 3.0 update, as before, its usage was limited only to PvP alone. Now, when it first got released, the use of Whirlwind Guard was more steamed for PvP as a great way to counter one-shot abilities of supers overall, and it still is used to this degree, although on a more lower basis. But what I then noticed was that its use in PvE was pretty much non-existent, as there wasn't enough content in game to warrant its full use. Being able to deflect a Ogre's projectile back to them with around 40 second uptime is great in practice, but the damage out of it isn't so great and even though the Hunters now have an exotic that ups their damage for doing so, it's still not amazing or overall worthwhile to get. Its application being more defensive rather than offensive pretty much required the user to use it in an environment where the payoff is more noticeable, aka PvP, and this isn't something we can argue against, as we can see plenty of clips of it in action solely around PvP alone. However, this made me think, a lot of things have changed since they were first released and now I think people should give these a second chance in PvE. Now, they're not game breaking, but they do offer the ability to get in close and act as a bait when needed. So let me give you a scenario, let's say a team member dies in the open area and they are completely surrounded on all sides in a grand mass environment. The usual step would be to try and take out the combatants bit by bit, or wait till supers are ready, or use an invis hunter, or balance your titan to close the gap. Instead, if you have this hunter with the following exotic and build, you can pop your super, start using your guard ability and block, revive them, and then let them get back to safely while you back off or attack. And this can be done multiple times over a few seconds as long as you have the super energy ready to do so. 
It's like a hunter version of Banner Shield, although with less buffs involved. I did want to make it similar to the support build as best as possible by allowing you to produce two orbs of power instead of one via Harmonic Siphon and Spark of Amplitude. I also attached the Kindling and Flame mod so that we can get a quick instant heal upon reviving team members, which is extremely useful in end game if we can't proc well of life. And of course, we have the ability to create jolts so we can become very amped very quickly. At best, the build performs perfectly under deep pressure, as your super is a great get out of jail free card that can be used and abused. It gives you another way to play Whirlwind Guard in PvE and not feel useless doing so, and it still gives you offensive option if need be. If you ever plan to play Grand Masters with a LFG group, or with a friend or a fan or whatever, and you want to spice up your gameplay a bit more, then this arc build is worth the investment, even if it's just a one-off. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like, a sub, and a share, and also follow me on Twitter if you want more general Destiny content, builds, and banter. And once again, thanks for stopping by, stay safe, and I'll see you on the next one.